doctors are at the end human beings there are emotions yeah. of distress disease death helplessness all around them how can yeah. doctors separate emotions and work labeling everything or personalizing everything even if deep down you know that okay there is a rational side to it that i could not do it because of this. not sleeping and you fall ill so then when you fall ill you will be absent you will not be there to help others then imagine how many calls will you be missing to be more rational at times when you feel the guilt and everything is taking over you and you're not feeling too good about yourself relative of patients mm-hmm. actually started mm-hmm. beating up doctors because yeah. of one reason or the yeah. other dear healthcare workers dear doctors other healthcare workers please take care of yourself Doctors are working long continuous hours in shifts which are as long as 24 hours in hospitals in very challenging environments and they face burnouts they face issues like mental stress emotional stress and so many other mental health issues in this video Dr Lavreen Kaur is going to answer all the questions as a clinical psychologist on issues specific to the mental health of healthcare workers Hello all. Welcome to Doctor's Talk. Today we are having with us Dr. Lavleen Kaur is a clinical psychologist at Mind on Health Delhi, Indus Health Delhi and at the School of Planning and Architecture. Today's topic is a very crucial topic and the title of the topic is Mental Health of Healthcare Workers on the COVID Frontline. We all are sitting at home and trying to pray that COVID doesn't touch us. But doctors healthcare workers are dealing with covid patients on a daily basis sometimes at in 24 hour shift and these people are dealing with issues they have no one to discuss with so let's today take up this very important issue on mental health for healthcare workers so ma'am how are you this evening i'm very fine thank you so much and i think that it's a very very relevant topic which we have picked up to, for today considering that how our frontline workers particularly the healthcare workers are being affected by the uh, pandemic going on so it's uh, it's my pleasure to help in the way possible and maybe to reach out to them so ma'am with this ma'am we'll just start directly with our first question this yeah. is these questions have been asked by doctors themselves so i am just relaying these mm-hmm. questions to you so that you can answer and my doctors are going to see them so the first question okay. is how to manage the feeling of loneliness in healthcare workers staying away from their families to avoid the risk of infecting them absolutely right that loneliness is something which they have been struggling for almost over a year now so we all know the reasons for them like they have critical infection control strategies which they have to follow wearing pp kits and everything being socially isolated being away from the family not being able to talk to them so definitely all these things are going to lead to a feeling of loneliness it is going to lead to other psychological issues as well so i think the best way to come out of it is that they need to stay connected so obviously with those multiple layers of pp it's not possible to connect but i think still in whatever possible ways we can we can just make small changes say for example while wearing that ppe kit layers of ppe kit in fact what they can do is they can maybe have some gestures to just ask each other how they are doing they can maybe just put some gestures for smiling maybe make use of sticky notes to leave a message of uh, encouragement apart from that they can connect they can connect with their supervisors they can connect they can have a peer support they can ha- meditate use some breathing techniques mindfulness is something which is really going to help and something which they can do at any point of time so these are certain things to, which can really help them in connect it is a physical distance not a social distance so that thing needs to be focused upon ma'am but you know to have a supplementary question to this question these people you know have been voluntarily staying away from their families to not infect yeah. their families so how to have that connect right. with the family you know we'll have more questions on family relation but if you could quickly tell us about right. how we can have this connect with the sure. family connect with the family because i i know that how these people are managing staying away from the family so maybe if not in person but maybe a regular video call a video session a chat with the kids with the family a regular check in is going to help them a lot because that is the only way as of now to take care of both the physical and the mental health of both the caregivers of the healthcare workers and the family as well okay okay thank you thank you ma'am i'm okay. really i'm sure this answer is going to help a lot of you know healthcare workers dealing yeah. with this loneliness crisis ma'am the next question you know that i want to ask you is about you know long hours and challenging environment so how is the mm-hmm. be- you know how to best perform in the midst of challenging environment how to cool off from burnouts right. while working long hours covid has led to unparalleled task in which the people our healthcare workers may or may not be equipped 
to deal with both professionally and uh, from a psychological viewpoint so obviously it is going to lead into burnout so burnout is any kind of an emotional exhaustion because of being in a situation or emotionally involving situation or challenging in situation it can lead to feeling of emotional exhaustion it can lead to depersonalization it can lead to feeling of lowered personal accomplishment so these are certain things which they need to be careful about first of all apart from that as far as the coping is concerned or the how to deal with that burnout is concerned i think first of all they have to be they have to accept they first of all the acceptance has to be there that okay fine there is a challenge out there and they have probably a change of mindset is going to help them that okay whatever challenge is coming your way it is a way of developing self development right apart from that uh skills of persistence and resilience are going to help them then active coping more of a problem solving rather than emotion focused coping that is going to help them right apart from that positive framing positive framing as in so we do the problem sensing we structure we generate the alternatives and we put it into uh, we evaluate it and see that how applicable or helpful it is then support from the supervisors so then they can have more of a positive feedback not just from the superiors not just from your seniors but from your colleagues also apart from that they can communicate with their coworkers tell them that how they are feeling about the pandemic how the pandemic is affecting them identify the source of stress because it's not necessary the workload there might be many other factors feeling incapacitated at times for not being able to handle the situation around that can also be another reason of say stress so i think being aware of what's troubling them is also very important then they need to remind themselves that it's a very unusual situation in which they are functioning with limited resources and identify and accept that these are certain things which you don't have complete control over in fact right and at the same time also increase your sense of control by maybe keeping your day to day routine intact to the extent possible obviously it's not possible right now but still basic level of uh, routine is still preservable say for example eating right taking maybe as much sleep as possible then apart from that stretching taking some breaks in between the shift shift hours transitions so see these things are something which will help them again doing some bit of mindfulness is impossible possible for them then when away from work when they are not on shift on duty hours so maybe they can just relax not catch up with what's happening over there they need to limit the news uh, watching right because they are the people who are in direct touch with the people who are affected by the virus so the more news they intake the more effect it is going to have on them then be very clear about the fact that any kind of drug use or alcohol use even for that matter prescription drugs also they need to be taken care of then apart from that they need to just sit down get in touch with oneself and one important very important fact is this that in case someone is going has been going through some kind of a mental health issue even before this pandemic started and they have been taking some meds for that a regular monitoring of the same is required and in case there is some worsening of the symptoms or they feel like some new symptoms have developed so it's very important that they should be seeking professional help for that apart from that just be happy matlab this is from my matlab this is what i perceive that be happy that you're doing the best possible for us in so many limitations and so much of restrictions actions so be easy on yourself i think that is very important will take you long way in dealing with uh, the burn work so ma'am apart from the burnout issue apart from you know long hours causing burnout there's another problem with long hours and that is the problem yeah. of monotony problem of mechanical yeah. repetitive work that has to be done over and over again so ma'am what is the best right. method to avoid you know any kind of exertion any kind of you know uh, mental issue that is caused by monotonous or mechanical work okay so then over there maybe we need to bring in some change so that change doesn't have to be on a drastic level or something which has to be matlab on a large scale so simple thing like laughing simple thing like cracking jokes simple thing like maybe checking on with your colleagues uh, listening to some music if you can't do anything else just go out take a small walk maybe till the next door or maybe just take, just go out talk to a friend catch up with your uh, family back home right or maybe just looking at the positives also so it's al- always uh, about how we sense the situation definitely there are external factors i'm not saying that's very easy it's very easy for us to say sitting over here but they out there are seeing deaths happening around them every day in and out but then at the same time i feel that if you look at the recoveries which are being made like people who are recovering i have seen videos going viral where patients are really happy and they're thanking the doctors 
for letting matlab uh, come letting them helping them come out of this corona virus and go home so i think that is another thing which can just lift their spirits a bit and help them feel a bit relaxed also and most importantly just remind yourself you're not a robo you are a human being and you are bound to feel tired you are bound to feel bored you are bound to feel irritated and frustrated so just let that feeling flow and then just identify it and then maybe look for whatever possible ways are there to relieve that okay right absolutely ma'am ma'am you know like doctors you know after years of practice and after so much training where they have to depersonalize themselves from the patient and the emotions yet we see right. that doctors are at the end human beings there are emotions yeah. of distress disease death helplessness all around them how can yeah. doctors separate emotions and work any kind of a profession comes with a set of expertise and an expected outcome so whenever we are uh, into a profession we expect certain outcomes but i think that at times it not it's not possible to get the desired outcomes and this is something which is very true during these times so that should take care of the guilt and helplessness because you are doing the best under limited resources restrictions inavailability of essentials like say for example pp kits and also i think that is something you should be acknowledging that you are doing the best you should be fortified fortified by reassuring yourself or remembering that the importance of the job you are doing out there saving people saving lives by whatever means you have at your disposal apart from that feel free to feel okay that's very important so don't suppress your feelings don't suppress it okay i won't think about it so feel free to feel apart from apart from that have a regular Uh, check-ins with your own self be open to how you are feeling like be open to the feelings that okay am i feeling depressed am i feeling angry i am feeling uh, irritated are there any thoughts or intrusive thoughts which are troubling me day in day because there might be some trauma related flashbacks also you see a death a young death happening so there might be some flashbacks also so it might be intrusive also it might be troubling you you might be having difficulty sleeping also apart from that any feelings of helplessness hopelessness so that might be suicidal ideations also because that is something which is also worrisome considering that in the past there has been a suicide by one of our doctors so i think that's also very important that let's not just go let's not get swayed away with the involvement in the work that's also important but at the same time we should be more aware of how we are feeling and that both the things are different work at its own place emotions are at its own place you can as a doctor depersonalize your emotions and your feelings but that patient sitting on the bed right. you still have to give him solace so you know how can right. healthcare workers deal with giving false solace to patients when they have to yes. cheer them up when in fact healthcare workers know very clearly that the other person will get worse or he might even you know just mm. expire in that case how to right. deal with this morality around this giving solace giving false solace how can you help the doctors in this yeah i don't agree i know at times they have to do it but still i think that rather than giving a false solace it would be good if they can just give the whatever the update about the patient's health in a very simple clear crisp and unambiguous statements right and uh, also the less ambiguous it is the less easy it is for the patient so there should be we should be using the soft skills so maybe we can use bit of empathy okay and because that way is you it will not affect you also and there won't be any false hopes in the patient also see patients do treat doctors as saviors but at the same time after all they also have the limitations so there are cases which we know are dipping day by day and we can't do anything about it so then i think more of a palliative care will help over there and apart from that a sense of hope we, rather than instilling a sense of hope we should be around to care for the patient deal with whatever anxieties or worries are surrounding the illness that is probably that is going to help them right absolutely 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 ma'am if we saw what happened in delhi we saw that you know yeah. there was oxygen shortages there were bed shortages hmm. doctors have had to refuse patients and you know sometimes doctor yeah. is part of this big organization he is part of this you know a uh, big situation where he cannot really help the patient so ma'am how can yeah. we separate personal efficiency mm-hmm. with respect to systemic challenges or system challenges mm. which hinder our personal efficiency system challenges hinder the personal efficiencies even if you are a very good surgeon for that matter say for example but you might not be having an adequate ot facilities you might not be having good infrastructure to carry out complicated surgery so over there it doesn't mean or it doesn't make you less of a professional or less of a good surgeon it's because the post, uh, the system 
challenges are so there are limitations in the system so i think labeling everything or personalizing everything even if deep down you know that okay there is a rational side to it that i could not do it because of this i'm not saying that each time you have to rationalize for your actions but at least you have to be more rational at times when you feel the guilt and everything is taking over you and you're not feeling too good about yourself so i think that that should uh, answer your question okay ma'am so ma'am you know just a continuation to this question you already answered this question but just to repeat it how to how do healthcare workers manage the feeling of getting depressed you know and helpless mm-hmm. when there is no supply mm-hmm. so this is actually the question you already answered but you can just make it very mm-hmm. simple for the healthcare workers i know see this is a very very relevant uh, point as of now and unfortunately i don't have any clear answer to this but yes still we can deal with the uh, feeling of of depressed deprived helpless because you you want to help but then you don't have the adequate supplies so i think over there you can just tell yourself that i am doing my best i am helping out it's not that i don't want to help i really don't want to help but then at the same time if like i don't want them to be selfish but i think that's very important that if you are not well if you are not doing good so then how will you take care of the patients out there so i think over there what they can do is that one they can take help of this thing otherwise they can also communicate to the higher authorities uh, other administration that these are certain things which are uh, like not there and inadequate and probably something can be done to procure it so these are certain things which can be done and again as i i am stressing on the fact again and again that there will be adverse circumstances there will be situations here where you might have to decide where you might feel uh, that okay i could have done bad, better but or i could have saved this patient but then you have to remember that you're dealing with humans you're dealing with lives and every individual is different and also if something unprecedented uh, happens it is not always that you did not give in your best you are working over there but then to work you also need certain things at your disposal absolutely ma'am absolutely ma'am you know there's a there's a next question which might be little you know controversial you can say but still i want to ask you this question regarding how to be ethical when the hospital administration admits a patient out of turn due to political link mm. nepotism or any other pressure so you know how does a doctor mm. deal with it when he's feeling guilty you know he's feel having ethical issues that why is this person getting when there are there are more seriously ill patients waiting outside in the queue why is this patient getting admitted mm-hmm. so what do you tell them ma'am mm-hmm. over there if you feel that your uh, talking to the higher authorities is going to help or maybe uh, change their decision in a way or maybe some alternative arrangements can be made so you can always go ahead and do that so so that you don't so basically it's a moral injury what's happening nowadays like what you're talking about it's a moral injury happening in times where there is like so much of uh, sufferings around you and you as a doctor who has taken the oath of helping others of serving others of saving others and you're not able to do that so it's a moral injury to you if you are not able to you feel that despite having the capacity to do that you're not able to do it so probably one there is no harm in going up and talking to the authorities about it and you still feel that that's not happening so then i think this is something which uh, probably is a matter of the administration and uh, if you want you can get it clarified and if it doesn't if if they are not able to resolve this guilt of yours or the, take care of this so then probably i think this is something which has to be dealt the way it is going on right so matter of let it be thank you for answering this question ma'am you know the next question you just spoke about the oath that doctors take the hippocratic yeah. oath that they take that they help yeah. all the patients but ma'am at the, there are okay. there are instances in the past ma'am where you know people where patients hmm. the relative of patients hmm. actually started hmm. beating up doctors because yeah. of one reason or the yeah. other so how hmm. to deal hmm. with hmm. thankless relatives of patients who blame the doctors hmm. for death of their family hmm. members how to prevent hmm. and get away from this kind of violence at workplace yes these kinds of unfortunate incidents have been happening since past one year i have seen so many videos where the doctors and the nurses are being hit badly hospitals being rampaged so this is a very unfortunate thing which is happening considering that what they are going through you are doing your job so it's like you are doing your job but they don't always their focus is that our patient should be saved so no for them your efforts are not good till the time the patient is saved so from their perspective you did not do good enough as simple as that just try and communicate to the patients caregivers or the relatives the status of the patient in a very clear and big unambiguous empathetic 
tone as possible and be prepared for the responses i know it's very easy again i would say it's very easy for me or for that matter other sitting at home to say nahi you should have handled it like this or that but people who are there they are actually running for their lives like i have seen terrible videos online with Uh, doctors being thrashed badly so but still be prepared for the responses don't judge the people out there for how they are feeling and don't take most importantly don't take the accusations personally argue or become defensive and the most important point please be aware of the security arrangements of your hospital the exit points or other po- areas where you can just go out because uh, obviously it's a mob hysteria you can't stop sometimes one thing starts off so it's very difficult to stop it so i think you should be aware of or you should be well equipped that how can you take care of yourself in during any such times so ma'am you know as doctors are made to deal with this kind of violence and a fight and a mental you know a mental battle at the workplace they're also so fighting mm-hmm. a war within their own families how to yeah. overcome this kind of guilt of not being able mm-hmm. to handle and you know to establish a balance between professional life and personal life and how to determine mm-hmm. and draw a line between uh, you know the health, pro- professional life and personal life and a, another small part of this question is that how to say no and be mm-hmm. not guilty when you're personally down yourself when you're sick when you're tired but your duty calls you see as far as the work to family balance is concerned i think there are certain things which can be done to uh, strike that balance so say for example you need to prioritize prioritize the work and the family responsibilities and try to shorten the to do list whatever list is there you should shorten it up and it should be prioritized manage your time judiciously but don't over schedule yourself so it should not be very very tight schedule detach from work so when you are done for the day when you come back so detach and transit transit from the work to the home life so maybe changing uh, sitting down with the family talking to the kids spending quality time time with your spouse or parents that is something which will help you apart from that communicate your needs might there might be times when you are going through something your supervisor or your colleague or senior doesn't know so it's very important to communicate at the same time you need to tell your family also so your family might be thinking that this thing could be avoided but you're not doing it so then you can always tell them that how difficult it is so that they can understand then be kind to yourself that's very important and be upfront with the family member is that what you are going through apart from that reflect on the fact that if you continue with this thing not being able to strike the balance between the work and family so how is it going to help you in the long run where do you see yourself 6 months down the line and also remind yourself that this pandemic is not going to last forever so it's something which is temporary and you don't have to feel guilty so here is the answer to the second question also you don't have to feel guilty of not being able to strike a balance because you're anyhow doing a lot of balancing act apart from that the second question was about the guilt of saying no so then if you feel that you are not uh, in the state to attend the call of your duty so then probably you need to communicate because as i pointed out in my last this thing talk on the family issues also the work family matters so i told this thing very clearly that it's very important that you need to communicate and if you feel that the authorities are understanding enough so then you need to work with your own self that it is okay it is okay till the time you are not able to take care of yourself so it's a very i don't know how relevant it is over here but whenever we do the air travel so the air hostess tells you that put on your oxygen mask first and then put it on others so this is something because if you are down how will you help the other person so i think this is something which is very helpful over here also so uh, probably they should focus on their mental health on their physical health also not just the mental health the physical health also treat yourself as a human being any kind of an abnormal uh, psychological reactions which are like leading to social occupational functioning that is hindering your performance on a day to day basis is a signal that something is not good you need help and it's not always that it's it's a symptomatic thing or a sim- you are meeting the diagnostic criteria for certain things but then at the same time it's a need for it's a signal for help so probably listen to yourself listen to what your mind is telling you so that is very very important and treat yourself as a human being so ma'am thank you so much you know we have covered a lot of ground today you have covered a lot of issues that healthcare workers face but before ending you know there's a bonus question that i want to ask you ma'am yeah. so this is a question mm-hmm. from a person who's working on answering to sos calls this person is not a healthcare okay. worker but they have to be on okay. the phone throughout the day to answer calls of people in home isolation question is that okay. i haven't been able to sleep now if i do for a few mm-hmm. minutes i wake up suddenly in fear of thinking that i must have missed an sos call which would have led to another death 
is this temporary okay. will this go on its own or do i need help see my dear uh, healthcare worker this is something which is temporary but then again as i told you that if it is troubling you uh, day in and day out and it's not letting you sleep and you are always thinking about the fact that i might have done something which could have resulted in loss so i think that you need to take some help over there before taking help you can just follow this advice of mine that just change your perspective over here change your perspective in the sense that there are you are doing your best as i pointed out time and again i have voiced it many times that you need to take care of yourself also to help others say for example you are not sleeping and you fall ill so then when you fall ill you will be absent you will not be there to help others then imagine how many calls will you be missing so it's better to recoup it's very important to charge yourself it's very important to give time to yourself so i hope this helps please follow this advice for some time and if you feel it's helping you fair enough but if you feel that it's progressing and you're not able to settle down then probably seek some help from you know talking about loneliness to you know talking about long hours burnouts to monotony in work to separating emotions and work and to you know talking about giving false solace and how this should be avoided you have covered a lot of important issues that are very imminent and every healthcare yeah. worker today in crucial situations is facing so ma'am i really really yeah. thank you and i want to i want you to say something to the audience to close this video so that they can be you know helped with and they can carry on functioning and carry on helping all of us sitting at homes and all the other people who are going yeah. to hospitals to take their help so i would first of all like to express my gratitude to them that because you are there so that's why we are feeling relieved that there are people out there so if we fall ill so we know there is someone we can look up to but dear healthcare workers dear doctors other healthcare workers please take care of yourself give some time to yourself you cannot just keep going on and on tired exhausted mentally exhausted not give time to yourself is not going to help you in fact i think that if you just treat yourself in a way just like any other day obviously with whatever limitations are there i think we can sail through this together and we are there for you we are sailing in this situation with you and uh, hopefully all these things will come to end and uh, my best wishes to all of you thank you thank you so okay. much ma'am it was really really nice having thank you today you. and thank really you so thank much. you on the behalf of all the healthcare workers who will watch this video and gain from it thank you so much